What up YouTube, Team Movies here. Today I'm mainly going to be talking about the disappointing movies of the year, in my opinion. Like this year, there's, there's been lots of really disappointments that got released this year. And I mean, granted, disappointed doesn't always mean like you know, bad films. Although about 9 out of the 10 movies on this list is actually literally terrible in my opinion. There's actually one, like, only one movie in this list that I actually quite enjoy, just didn't know it was as good as it should have been. Anyway, with that being said, here's my 10 favorite dis favorite. Uh, let me rephrase that. Uh, or repeat that. Here's my top 10 disappointing movies of 2019. My bad. Lots of these are not my favorite. Alright, coming in at number 10, it is uh, Anna. Now, I thought the trails for this looked pretty decent. You know, it was Luke Besson's return to action. You know, uh, you got a great cast. Like, you had Helen Mirren. You had Cillian Murphy. Luke Evans. Uh, Sasha Lust. Like, I, granted, I've I never really seen Sasha in anything before. But I thought this could have been a breakout uh, role for her. Sad to say, this movie... Like, some of the action was pretty decent. But this movie stunk so badly. It was really horribly made. It... It was poorly made. It, I mean, Helen Mirren, her, her acting in this was not all that good. Either. And, I, yeah, I just thought this movie was pretty bland, boring. And in the end, they, kind of try, um, they ended up trying to set this for a sequel. But after the success, after what we saw in the box office for Mana, nowhere we're getting a sequel. This is not going to be like a John Wick thing where we're going to get more sequels. So... Hopefully we'll get, like, a fe like another female uh, John Wick-based film in the near future. I mean, they're already talking about doing, like, a John Wick uh, female spinoff, so we'll see. Coming in at number nine, this is the only film on this list that I actually quite like, but still found it a little um, underwhelming. Number nine is Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Now, I, I you know, I, I really quite like the, the film. Take the off, though, nigga. You know, I, I, I really quite like, uh, you know, uh, King of the Monsters. I, but I still thought the uh, the script was a little uh, bland. Uh, some of the acting in this wasn't all that great. But there was stuff in this that I really quite enjoyed. I liked it. Like the scenes with the monsters. Apparently that actually made this movie really uh, enjoyable. And I, I still thought it was pretty fun. Just especially mainly with the monsters um, on board. But they really focus more on the human characters at times. But, like I said, I still like the movie. Just wish it was better. Hopefully, Godzilla vs. Kong is going to be a better film. But, we'll see. Alright, coming in at number 8 it is Man in Black Air National. Now, I was actually intrigued by this. You know, uh, when they first announced that they were going to do a new Man in Black movie without Will Smith and uh, Tom Lee Jones, I was skeptical. But then they announced that uh, the director, Shreya Compton, was uh, the director of this. Um, you had Chris Hansworth and Tessa Thompson, who last starred in uh, Dora Ragnarok. So, that there, I had some hopes for this. But this movie just, it reeked. It's probably the worst out of the Man in Black franchise. I mean, Chris Hemsworth, it literally shows that Chris Hemsworth, outside of uh, Marvel, his, like, he's not always the best in like other stuff. Like, we saw... He was, I really quite like Ghostbusters, Vacation, and uh, Rush, and of course Cabin in the Woods. But his some of his other stuff, like uh, you know, In the Heart of the Sea, wasn't all that great. Uh, Black Hat wasn't great, and this also uh, show. I mean, yeah, and Chris Hemsworth and uh, Thompson, their chemistry was you know on point. But yeah, this movie was just really bland. It was pretty boring at times. It wasn't at all that funny. Uh, it had some dumb characters in this. Except that uh, vo that character voiced by Kimel Nanjiani, that that character was actually the highlight of the movie. But yeah, Man in Black International, worst Man in Black movie ever. All right, coming in at number seven is Twenty One Bridges. Now, this is another uh, film that starred a uh, you know Marvel star, and uh, of course uh, you had um, Chadwick Boseman starring in this. Uh, Sad, I, you know, I quite like the trailers. I don't know, it sounded um, decent, but I thought this movie was just very, uh, very bland. It had a horrible script behind it. Chadwick Boseman couldn't really say this film at all. Uh, the Fon James was okay, but 
Yeah, and it was. I was also really curious to see what else like the Russo brothers could do. Like, granted, the Russo brothers didn't direct this or anything. They only like uh, was a uh, you know producer on it. So I was interested to see what else they could do when uh, their, you know Kevin Feige is all in their hands. But yeah, this was not the best uh, film that film on their filmography less. <coughs> Stop with that. Anyway, yeah, Twenty One Bridges. I'm. I want you to like it too because you know, I like Chadwick Boseman and the other cast, but yeah, this was not that good a film. All right, coming in at number six is The Curse of La Llorona. Now, I thought the trailers for this looked decent. You know, I like the con like outside of the Nun, I really like the Conjuring uh, franchise, and I was very disappointed with the Nun. So I was hoping to see a, like another film in the Conjuring franchise that would have been at least better. Sad to say, Curse of La Llorona was not all that good. I thought it was pretty boring. Uh, it wasn't that scary at all. Horrible script here. And sad part and disappointing part is this movie is being directed by this director named Michael Chavez, who is also directing Conjuring 3. So that there alone is why I'm a little skeptical about Conjuring 3. But still, I'm still looking forward for Conway Dewey because James Wan is still attached, but he was still a producer on Curse of La Llorona and The Nun 2, so... Mm. Fingers crossed, Conway Dewey will be good, but Curse of La Llorona, yeah. It had a good premise, too, but... Anyway, coming in at number 5, it is Gemini Man. Now, this actually had an interesting premise. I mean, Will Smith, uh, you know, playing, you know, a younger and a uh, older version of himself, that sounded pretty cool. You had Ang Lee on um, directing. Uh, you know this script has been going like uh, this premise has been um, in like you know it has been in the works for like over um, twenty five years. But man, Gemini Man was a horrendous mess. It had some funny like one liners, yes, but this movie was just you know flat out bad. Uh, even Will Smith couldn't save this one, like. This uh, between this and uh, and Aladdin, this is actually who knew that uh, you know Aladdin would be the better um, Will Smith film. But yeah, and the movie also flopped too, so we're definitely not going to get a sequel. But uh, yeah, I wish this movie was good because it had an interesting premise. But and the trailer is pretty decent. Yeah, but the film itself just didn't translate that well. Coming in at number four is X Men Dark Phoenix. You know I've really enjoyed the uh, X Men Fox films. You know I liked. Uh, I am actually one of the few who didn't mind Apocalypse. I like Dark Phoenix. Um, Dark Phoenix. I like uh, eight, um, Days of Future Past. I might say. I liked. Uh, you know I liked First Class. I liked the uh, you know the Deadpool films, Logan. But Dark Phoenix is the worst X Men movie since Last Stand. It was not really that good. Horrible effects terrible acting like even Jennifer Lawrence's acting in this was not that good like you could tell that she really did not care to squats about her mystic character and it's a shame too because she she's an Oscar winning actress she's an Oscar nominated actress but even Lawrence couldn't really say this film at all and Sophie Turner I mean I'm not really ready to call her a great actress outside of Game of Thrones yet she, she'll, I think Sophie Turner will get there just yeah Dark Phoenix did not like Dark Phoenix was also the film that was supposed to, like, uh, showcase, um, Sophie Turner's acting out, like, after, uh, Game of Thrones. But, yeah, it... Actually, most of the actors from Game of Thrones outside of, uh, the show haven't really showcased their acting well. Like, Hit Harrington, uh, Nicola Casawato. You know, Game of Thrones just ended, so hopefully they'll get there, but... We'll see. And also, they wasted poor Chastain. So you do not waste Chastain at all. But, uh, whatever. Alright, coming in at number three, it is Cats. Now, I wasn't really all excited for this movie, but I was kind of intrigued by it because I'm actually one of the few people who didn't mind the trailers. You know, I'm a sucker for musicals. Even on popular musicals, I do, I sort of do like. You know, I like a director, Tom Hooper. Uh, I like the cast of Vav. But this movie just blew. It's one of the worst movie-going experience I've seen all year. This movie stunk so badly. Horrible acting out of lots of the cast. Also proves that Taylor Swift is not really ready to uh, star in the film yet. I mean, 
some of the music was okay. Like, uh, Jennifer Lawrence sing uh, Memory, that was actually the highlight of the movie. But other than that, this movie just stuck really badly. Hor- you know, horrible effects. Uh, it was really dumb. I mean, this movie just blew so badly, and... Oh, God. This, this movie is a, a crime against humanity. I might even call it worse than the Emoji movie. And that's actually hard to... Uh, that's really hard to compete by, but... Coming in at number two is The Kitchen. Now, I was interested in this film because I like the trailers. You know, I like Melissa McConaughey, Tiffany Haddish, Elizabeth Moss. And this was the film that uh, was supposed to showcase uh, Haddish's dramatic uh, acting chops. But I thought this movie just... It blew really badly. I thought it was pretty boring. It they even try to make it a little comedic, but even the comedy didn't work. Uh, I mean, the acting wasn't all that good, except for Little Liz Moss. I thought she was like her acting was like the better acting out of the bunch. But yeah, this movie just wasn't all that good at all. Based on a uh, ver- like I think a Vertigo comic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, The Kitchen definitely not a good film at all. Hopefully, we'll see how she, like uh, showcase the dramatic chops, action chops. Like, in the future, I mean, I think she has act like I love her comedy, but I think she I'll has some. I think she could easily I mean, showcase her dramatic chops in, in the near future. But anyway, coming in at number one, it is Hellboy. You know, I really quite like the trails for Hellboy. You know, it, I'm I'm always a sucker for R A comic book films. Like after Deadpool and Hellboy, I was really intrigued to check out another R A comic book material, and I. I was interested in Hellboy because David Harbour looked awesome. I like the director, uh, Neil Marsha. But I saw Hellboy, and it is one of the worst movies of the year. It's a, it's, it's just flat out bad. Uh, David Harbour was okay, but that was it. Uh, M- Mila Jovish, her acting was horrible in this. It had some pretty dumb humor, dumb actions. It has some okay files, but uh, some dumb action secrets. I mean, yeah, I, I really want you to like this film too, but just because you know I like the trailers, uh, David Harbour I like, but this movie was just not so good at all. And yeah, you know, second movie on this list that features the Stranger Things star, by the way, because you know a Millie Bob Brown's in Godzilla King of the Monsters. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick rundown. Ten Anna. 9. Godzilla King of the Monsters 8. Men of Black International 7. 21 Bridges 6. The Curse of La Llorona uh, 5. Gemini Men 4. Dark Phoenix 3. Cats 2. The Kitchen and 1. Hellboy Now there's a few others I could have added like uh, Ad Astra I was disappointed by uh, Maleficent Mistress of Evil um, Lucy in the Sky I was disappointed by uh, Wonder Park I was kind of interested in Wonder Park but that movie wasn't all that great but yeah, actually, lots of movies that I'm disappointed by. I thought was terrible. Like Godzilla: King of the Monsters is actually, I, like I said, that's the only movie in this whole list that I actually quite like, but was still a little disappointed by. Anyway, let me leave it to you guys. Uh, what what were now? I know lots of people will probably add Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker, but I quite liked the movie a lot. I wasn't really disappointed by it at all. But uh, anyway, uh, let me leave it to you guys. Uh, what is, what were some of your most disappointing movies of 2019? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is C Movies signing off.